and a very pleasant good day to each and every one of you. I'm Brother James, and I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Thank you for joining us for what I believe is uh, lesson number 12 in the uh, our study of the book of Revelation. And we, we got into verse 9 last time, but we're not able to cover all the material found in that verse. So let's read it together. Uh, Revelation 1, 9. In fact, uh, let's read down through verse 11. I don't know that we'll get that far, but we'll read it for context. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Okay, so... You know where we are, the prison cell on Patmos, and John is being visited by the Lord, and the Lord is giving to John the revelation of himself, what Jesus Christ will do with the church, what Jesus Christ will do with churches, what Jesus Christ will do with the nation of Israel, what Jesus Christ will do with the Gentiles, what Jesus Christ will do with Satan, what Jesus Christ will do with principalities and powers, what Jesus Christ will do with Babylon, what Jesus Christ will do with mystery Babylon, what Jesus Christ will do with the earth, with heaven, with death, with hell. The, the, the wrapping up of everything is going to be revealed in this book to John by the Lord. He is placed on this island for the testimony, for the testimony. And we noted last time it means because of the backward view, because of John's relationship to Jesus Christ and his faith in the Word of God, he's been exiled here, but also so that he can reveal these events in writing from Jesus to us. He is another example of that great verse in Genesis 50, verse 20, ye meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And of that New Testament uh, saying, Romans 8, 28, for we know that all things work together for good, to them love God, to them were the called according to His purpose. Often in history, God's people uh, have times of trial which become seasons of illumination. Joseph went to prison to be the revealer of secrets. David was driven into the dens of the earth to write his psalms. Daniel was orphaned and hauled to Babylon to view the history of Gentile world government. Paul was led into Arabia to learn the mysteries of the new covenant. And here John is taken to this island, and while on this island, the revelation is given to him. This word tribulation causes many, many people a great deal of trouble. There is so much controversy about it and so many arguments about the tribulation, the great tribulation, and tribulation without the definite article. We believe the scripture teaches all three. There is tribulation, there is the tribulation, and there is the great tribulation. And the reason we believe in all three is because the Bible mentions all three. John says that he is in tribulation, and the seven churches to whom he is writing are in tribulation. There are, we're, we're going to run some verses, and what I'm going to say right now in five minutes will be ex 
expanded upon in 5, 10, 15, 20 hours before we are finished, and you'll get none of it if, if you just quit the first time you hear something you think you disagree with. John, no, no, before we get to John, there are people today who are saved and love the Lord and they are my brothers and sisters in Christ and I am their brother and their sister in Christ because I am saved and I also love the Lord. And if they don't think I'm saved, that doesn't matter. And if they, if they don't think I love the Lord, that doesn't matter, especially those who say that who have never met me and never will meet me their opinion doesn't matter. I have trusted the finished work of Jesus Christ for the salvation of my soul, and I do many things wrong, and there's many things I should do that I don't do, and I, I think that what I believe about the Bible is right, but I'm sure when I stand before Jesus Christ, I'll find out there's some things I believe about the Bible that aren't right. So I'm not saved because I'm right about everything, and I'm not saved because I do everything right. I'm saved by the grace of God because I put my faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Now, there are other people who are just as saved, and they believe different things about the tribulation. I believe the Bible teaches there is a seven-year period of time called the tribulation, it is called the time of Jacob's trouble, and it is called Daniel's 70th week, though that title is not used in Daniel, but it is the 70th week of Daniel's prophecy. I also believe that out of that seven years, there are 1,260 days, 42 months, three and one half years, known as the great tribulation. That's Matthew 24 in many places in the book of Revelation. And I also believe that every individual experiences tribulation. Some experience tribulations more than one. John is writing a letter in the last years of the first century following the birth of Jesus Christ. He is writing that letter to his brethren who assembled in seven real churches, in seven real cities in the region of Asia. And those people are going to receive this book that he is writing, and they are going to read this book that he is writing, and when John writes this letter, John is in tribulation, and the people who get the book he's writing are also in tribulation, which means that you can't possibly make every reference to tribulation the seven years or the three and one half years of the tribulation or the great tribulation because these people, John included, or are in tribulation over 1900 years ago. But they were not in the tribulation or in the great tribulation. So you have to agree with me, you have to agree with me that the word tribulation in the Bible doesn't always mean that time period addressed in parts of Revelation and parts of Matthew and parts of Luke and parts of the Old Testament. You, you, you have to agree to that or you're just arguing against plain words and common sense. Look at Acts chapter 14, Acts chapter 14, and verse number 22, Acts 14, verse, well, verse 21, and when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith 
and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Okay? Now here's, here's what some of you are going to do or, or have done. And this is what some of you have been taught that you should do. You are going to read that verse and you're going to say, we must through much tribulation enter to the kingdom of God equals, you're, you're going to take that phrase, you're going to say equals, the church must go through the seven years of great tribulation or the three and one half years of great tribulation in order to enter into the earthly kingdom or in order to be saved or in order to get to heaven. Well, here's your problem. And I, don't get angry. Here's your problem. Someone had preached the gospel in Lystra. That's not you. That's not anybody you know. That's not any preacher you listen to. Someone had preached the gospel to people in Iconium and to people in Antioch. Okay? So here's three cities. They're named. Preachers preached in those cities. They are named in the chapter. And they preached to people living in those cities. And they told those people, we, the preachers and the people they're talking to, must through much tribulation enter the kingdom of God. And the Holy Spirit put in the Bible. So these men did not lie to the men they were speaking to. But nobody in Acts 14 set foot into one hour of the seven-year tribulation prophesied in the Bible. None of those men experienced one, one moment of the three and one-half years of great tribulation spoken of and taught in the Bible. So here are your options. Everyone who is saved dies, goes to be with the Lord, absent from the body, present with the Lord. But when the tribulation begins, they have to leave the Lord and leave heaven and come down here and go through much tribulation. Or everyone who is saved in Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, and the preachers who are preaching to them, has to still be alive today and they have to live long enough to go through the seven-year tribulation or the three-and-a-half-year great tribulation, or there's one other option, or tribulation doesn't always mean the seven-year period called the tribulation or the three-and-a-half years known as the great tribulation. That's your only options. You can't use Acts 14.22 to argue that the Christian church is going through the Great Tribulation or the Tribulation because the people who were told they had to go through Great Tribulation, through much Tribulation, didn't go through any of those time periods and they're not going to. Now, here's how you can honestly and accurately interpret and understand and teach this passage. Everybody who is saved is going to go through much tribulation between now and the time they enter the presence of God. That's a fact. And it doesn't require you to misappropriate a verse of the Bible and teach it falsely. Look at John chapter... Uh, 16, John chapter 16, and verse 30, well, 31. Uh, Jesus says, uh, Jesus answered them, Do ye now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own. He, he's speaking to the eleven, because Judas, we know what's going to become of him. And ye shall, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. These things have I spoken unto you, 
that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Now, now again, if you're going to make every reference in the Bible to tribulation, a reference to the seven-year time of Jacob's trouble, you're going to have to rest this scripture to someone's destruction. I hope not your own. I, well, I, I hope nobody's. But you can't leave this as it stands. If you're going to make this a proof text that the followers of Jesus are going through Daniel's 70th week, you, you got a problem. And I'll show you what it is. Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered. He's not talking to me. I'm not there. He's not talking to you. You're not there. I was not there in that hour. You were not there in that hour. He's talking to a specific group of people facing a specific hour. He is going to be arrested. He is going to be tried. He's going to be beaten. He's going to be nailed to a cross, and they are going to scatter. That's what he said, and that's what he did. That's what they did. I'm not alone. Father's with me. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. Now, that verse is for me, and that verse is for you, but that verse was also for them. You, you, you can't take John 16, and make it mine and yours and ours and not theirs. He is speaking to the men who would go through that hour of fear and disappointment and, and whatever other emotion they had. They ran away. They left him. But he said to them, in the world ye shall have tribulation. Now one of those men was Simon Peter. Simon Peter was martyred before the close of the first century. 1900, almost 2,000 years ago, Simon Peter died. James, dead. Thomas, dead. Bartholomew, dead. Thaddeus, dead. They're gone. They're dead. And still, we have not had the first day of the Great Tribulation. We have not had one week of the Tribulation. And yet these men, unless Jesus lied, and He didn't, these men had Tribulation in the world and then died and went to be with Jesus and never experienced the Tribulation or the Great Tribulation. So stop stop trying to use verses out of the Bible to put the New Testament church in the tribulation or in the great tribulation when those verses could not possibly be taught correctly and justify such a position. Please, please. You say, well, do you, you think the church is going or not going? We're, we're not even there yet. My, my first concern is you letting people take verses out of their context and misread them and incorrectly define words and then teach you things that aren't so based on verses that don't say what the teacher says they say. That's, that's, that's the first thing we've got to take care of. Now, look at Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17 and verse number 20. Luke 17 and verse number 20. And when the, uh, when he was the demand of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. 
the kingdom of heaven does, the kingdom of God does not. Well, I thought, that's why we study the Bible. I mean, why spend your whole life basing what you believe on what you think when God wrote a book? Verse 21, Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. John chapter 3. John chapter number 3 and verse number 5. John chapter 3, verse number 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So what is the kingdom of God? It's an invisible kingdom. It's a spiritual kingdom. It is entered by the new birth, according to the Bible. 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. And let's read starting at verse number 10. 2 Timothy 3 verse number 10. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. Oh, do you remember those cities? What persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. How about that? Now, what were you told? What were you told that the men in those three cities and the men who preached in those three cities, what were you told that they were going through or would go through? Tribulation, much tribulation. What is that called when the preacher who went through it recalls it in 2 Timothy chapter 3? Verses 10 through 12, it is called persecution or persecutions. So one may suffer tribulation by being persecuted because he is part of a spiritual kingdom, but such has nothing to do with going through 21 out poured judgments by a God of wrath upon those who rejected his son during a specific period of time with a start point and an end point. The Bible says in Luke 6, 22, Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil, for the Son of Man's sake. So Romans 3, 5, let's, let's go there and, and finish up our first little look at tribulation in our study of Revelation. Romans chapter 5 and verse number 1. Romans 5, 1 reads as follows. Therefore, being justified by faith, I am... I hope you are. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I do. I hope you do. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. I'm not standing on faith plus works or grace plus works. I have come by faith and I now stand in grace and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations, plural, also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And patience experience and experience hope and hope makes not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Justified tribulations. Peace with God, tribulations. Access by faith into grace, tribulations. Rejoicing, tribulations. 
in hope of the glory of, of God, tribulations. What is tribulation? It's a bad time. But it's for all times and it's many times in the lives of those on this earth who are the followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, who are true to His Word. Don't make every Bible reference a reference to a seven-year time known as the tribulation or a three-and-a-half-year time known as the great tribulation because if you do that, that one error will lead to another error and to another error and to another error and then you got real serious doctrinal problems which we'll come to later in our study. All right, Revelation 1, let's, let's hurry back there. Revelation chapter 1 and verse number 9. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation. So God, John was in tribulation when he wrote the letter and the people to whom he's writing the letter were in tribulation when they got the letter and read it. And he's also uh, companion in, in, in their in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. Before we see the vision of Christ, we learn that such sights call for special circumstances. They require a suited condition of soul. Thus it is that John finds himself in circumstances of trial, and yet, though truly in the kingdom of God, and though truly subject to Christ, he is not in the kingdom and glory, but in the kingdom and patience of Jesus. Look at it carefully. In the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. What are we going to get to as we make our way through the book of Revelation? The kingdom and glory of Jesus Christ. But right now it's the kingdom and patience. In other words, the king and his kingdom. The kingdom of God, his going on right now. Kingdom of heaven going on right now. Gentile powers controlling will be his. One day, Jesus the king one day Jesus, the ruler of the kingdom, will be sitting in his glory, ruling and reigning in that glory. Right now, it's kingdom and patience. Just like, remember, remember, he's the prince of the kings of the earth? So what you have in Revelation 1, the things which are. Right now, Jesus Christ is a prince. He will be the king. Right now, we're patiently waiting for what? The glory that is going to follow. Verse 10, John was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind him a great voice as of a trumpet. I, I, I thought we'd do that this segment. Let's not. Let's not. Let's, let's just conclude with verse number 9. Thanks for watching. Hope you'll join us for more of these studies. Uh, for all of our uh, sermons available on our YouTube channel. We have verse-by-verse -verse teaching on every book of the Bible and thousands of hours of recorded sermons and Bible studies on many different topics. And all of those materials, including dozens of books that we have in print, all of that is available to you at our website, jameswnox.org. Anything we can do to help you in a personal or spiritual matter, we'll do our best. We'll try. God's able. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.